Dear friends and members of the Gideon Fly Thermal Observatory, good evening. Welcome to one more online science cafe. This time we are going to discuss about uh, to discuss about the oldest world tree, the heuristic approach, uh, archaeo astronomy research related to the total solar eclipses. Uh, and the speaker tonight is our own our scientist, our astrophysicist, Alexander Prokofiev. Alexander. Thank you very much, George. Okay, let's start with our oldest world tree. So, uh, first of all, I want to show where we are. What do we mean uh, by the words oldest? Yes. And uh, uh, here is our time scale. It goes in uh, uh, before common era and after common era, the common era uh, uh, time. So first civilization, it's question what do we mean by civilization, but does mean much for us at the moment. First civilization should appear at around 3000 before common era. And Neolithic age started at uh, around 8000 uh, before common era period moment. And uh, the Paleolithic age, it started about 2.6 million years ago. And uh, one of the most important point here is a, a mark of 2 million years ago, maybe 1.7 million years ago. It is a moment when speech of humans appeared. So Paleolithic lithic means uh, uh, the tool of humans was stone. And uh, the people start to talk with each other about 2 million years ago. That period in Paleolithic age, uh, people were generally hunting and gathering in such activities they were involved. And the difference between Paleolithic and Neolithic is very dramatic because of it brought to uh, uh, the border is the beginning of farming and domestication. So people start to grow their plants and produce their own meat for food and milk and so on. So that was the, that's why we name it Neolithic uh, revolution. So it fell somewhere here. But what's the most important at the moment is that Paleolithic and Neolithic is a bit like uh, not precise uh, in the it's it has it has precise definition but not precise time frame for different areas on the in the world because of some people till now uh, live in let's say neolithic age they don't have even uh, writing in their uh, uh, culture so it's uh, that what we have uh, in general uh, when we speak about Paleolithic and Neolithic age periods. So it's like mainstream, the time uh, frame here, but for different tribes, for different groups of people, uh, this uh, frame should be different. Okay, so hunting and gathering is Paleolithic age, Neolithic is farming and domestication, and creating of science is that what is connected with first civilization. The type of thinking uh, is uh, belongs to different uh, periods of human civilization. We name mythopoetic, uh, which belongs to Neolithic age. We could not say much about Paleolithic age, though people speak already those days, but we, we don't much know about type of thinking for that period. That's why it's empty here. And uh, uh, the uh, time after first civilization appeared, we have two types of thinking, historical and natural science. So something like that. It's again, like general idea. We will discuss more further mythopoetic type of thinking because of our uh, world tree belongs to it. So let's go step by step about uh, from one 
uh, period to another. So Paleolithic age, mostly it is hunting and gathering, not mostly it is hunting and gathering. We have art from that period, for, exam for example, caves uh, filled with uh, images. And uh, here we have one of the oldest Im image of hunting on an animal. And uh, we dated it with uh, Uran uh, dating at least 40, around 44,000 uh, before present. And uh, here we could see uh, an animal and scale 20 centimeters shows that uh, the drawing is huge. Not many animals look like that. They've been one to one. It's larger than one to one. And we have uh, Tierra Anthropes, so a human sh uh, shape is dr drawn here. And the head is not of a human, but of a beast of Tierra. Uh, so we have uh, this group of four human anthropos, uh, Tierra Anthropes, which are hunting the unknown, the, this very animal. And what we know from Paleolithic age is that those days there was a ritual and people believe that what they do during ritual, for example, they draw an animal, they draw hunters, they draw wounds on the animal and this drawing of wound should bring to the real hunting when it happened after, for example, after this ritual, that the animal will get this wound. So people want to construct the a reality in a way how they make it in ritual. So that's what we have, uh, what uh, idea was in Paleolithic age. And that should be the main reason why people make such cave drawings. Uh, now we are coming to mythopoetic thinking and it's a bit different from previous time. Uh, here, uh, we know a bit much more, and uh, the idea is that there is house and creation, and uh, creation comes from the ha house, and uh, then creation dissipates again into chaotic state, and uh, we have this constant circle, and we should repeat it constantly, and there is uh, we should, uh, with the help of ritual, we repeat, we return from house again the creation. And there is a sacred place of creation. So it's, uh, it comes from myth. So we know it because we know myths in this period. And uh, there, uh, this place, uh, sacred place, it is constantly repeated in rituals and the uh, rituals always represent it. And uh, rituals are not about only birth, wedding, and death. We'll discuss uh, them a bit later in further. And uh, the, uh, the mythopoetic thinking was very well uh, under consideration by Toporov. There is a large book in two volumes, in more than 1,000 pages, uh, which is uh, named World Tree. So there are a lot of works, not only by Toparov, but all over the world made with uh, discussing what's happened with World Tree. So let's proceed further. So what we have, World Tree is a model of the world and it is its position to be in sacred place of creation. That's what we found out and it's practically everywhere in the old world and the new world. The World Tree consists of three parts, upper, central, and lower. So like this, we have three parts. And uh, these three parts represent many things, many ideas. If we talk about the tree itself, it is branches, the upper part, trunk, and roots. Uh, if we if world tree represents the world, then it is heaven, earth, and underworld. There are creatures on this world tree, birds always on the top, Tonic creatures and uh, for, uh, 
of frogs and uh, snakes, uh, they are always at the bottom. And in the uh, central part, we all constantly see hoofed animals like uh, elks, like uh, horses, and so on. If a tree represents human, it is head, torso, and legs. It could even represent something I, uh, imaginary like process when it is occurrence, development, and decline. So many different parts of the three uh, regions could be connected with it. We'll tree at the same time, the central part always represents four things. For example, four sides, the front, back, right, and left or cardinal points, north, south, east, west, or even seasons, four seasons, or four gods, four winds, four plants, animals, colors, four, el four elements. Four elements, for example, are in China, in Chinese culture. So we constantly uh, meet with four sides or around central part. Uh, what is a world tree like species? Uh, here, there are many of them. For example, oak could be found in Slavs outlook, in Finnish or in Baltic, ash in Old Norse and Slavs again, pine we could see it in Abaza folklore, sycamore in ancient Egypt, and so on. So you may read it by yourself all the rest. I don't want to proceed with the rest. But that's what important is that uh, Sika, uh, Sycamore in ancient Egypt uh, so uh, preserved very well because of ancient Egypt was the first country where we met with writing and in written form. Sycamore uh, preserved till now. In Old Norse and uh, in ancient India, or uh, in this mythology, we have good preserved uh, world tree. Well, others not so well like these three. So let's make an excourse to different types of them. For example, Sycamora. Now we believe that even in the very beginning of appearance of writing, so in Old Kingdom, it's uh, more than 2,600 years before Common Era. In that period, Sycamora was physically a tree which stood in temple dedicated to God of the sun in Heliopolis. So it is fact which is already established, so we know it. But here I took another picture, which is, it is very famous, though it is from New Kingdom. So it's more than one and a half thousand year, uh, years later since the first Sycamora appeared in the mythology. So what we, we see here, Sycamora, a tree, and next to it, God Ra, which was, which transformed himself into cat. So uh, Ra, and uh, this, uh, this is a moment of creation of the world when Ra killed a uh, snake, and after that was reborn. So uh, Ga, Ra was reborn, it means that it is uh, just appeared, so it is center of the world. So that's why Sycamora took this special position. It is drawing here, but it's not just drawing, it is drawing of central sacred place. Well, uh, I already said that another well-preserved uh, world tree is in Norse cosmology. So the name of our tree is Igr Yggdrasil, and it is ash tree. And uh, this is uh, from a manuscript in Iceland. And uh, it's very young, let's say 17th century only. We couldn't date it uh, more precise. Anyway, we have this drawing of world tree there of in Igr Yggdrasil. So at the top, we have an eagle. Do you remember? Birds at the top. At the bottom, we have chthonic creature, a dragon. And on the branches, we have four deers. This is a text from uh, uh, the uh, uh, Edda, where which describes 
even names of these four male deers. So we have one, two, three, four, all four of them. And they're exactly where they should be in the middle. And they're hoofed animals. So very precise, very good preserved world tree. Uh, oh, wait a bit, I, I, I need one more thing. I didn't describe it here. The word ig and Slavic Eva, they have, uh, they should come from uh, pre in the proto in the European. Let me see. Equal. So uh, it should it should have the same root. And Eva is willow in uh, Russian. So uh, uh, the, that type of tree. And it was the world tree in some uh, spells. It, it is registered there. Is attested. So let's proceed further. I already said that Ashwatha is a world tree. In fact, in, in translation by Greenfish of the hymns of Rigveda, he translated not as Ashwatha, but he translated as fig tree. So we have fig tree with elongated leaves. So here, this is the image of, of this tree. Uh, Rigveda is dated around uh, one uh, 1200 before common era so that that is the oldest period of uh, uh, Indian mythology when when we registered it it was dated that time but it was recorded much later well so uh, we have and uh, again it is the beginning and uh, the uh, this a uh, pipal tree or fig tree or just ashwatha. Uh, it was uh, recorded and attested in many, many documents, in many texts, and in many images in uh, India. So it's well developed and well preserved ideas about it, you know, these days. I want to say something about that what exists now. Shamans, shaman uh, culture exists till now. For example, in Teva Republic, there are three really main religions, Christianity, Buddhism, and Shamanism. And I met with the main shaman of Teva. I just did not talk with him personally, but I had the opportunity even to talk to him. At that time, I did not know what to discuss. <laughs> but now I know I had to discuss with him shaman tree. Uh, because of, in fact, shaman religion exists now, and we may ask shamans what the shaman tree means. And these uh, questions were asked, and uh, uh, the shaman Inca, she was 104 years old, she, in 1926, she made this drawing of how shaman tree looks like. So uh, this is at one side, her drawing. At another side, we have a co shaman costume, that costume shaman uh, wear during uh, rituals. And a lower part of it represents underworld, and shaman goes from the uh, middle world to underworld, and he or she goes by this shaman tree. Uh, the travel happened here and then back uh, by this, the same trip uh, to the upper worlds. Well, what it consists of, at the roots are represented by snakes here, by nothing here. Uh, the trunk is represented by frogs here and by scales, which are practically the same like frogs on the other side. Leaves are uh, rounded Chinese mirrors, tole. I'll talk about them a bit later. So here we have leaves, here round tole, and here round uh, mirrors again. Flowers and berries are brass bells. It is sh they're shown by Inca, but they are not at this very specific costume. Still, they exist. So uh, what I want to uh, stop at is leaves. Tole, so it is Chinese mirrors, which are connection of them with shamans. When I was, I already said in Teva, I visited the museum, uh, the uh, state museum, and I talk with, with uh, uh, specialists in uh, 
uh, shaman culture there. And they told me that Toli, this type of mirror, is deeply connected with shamans. To become a shaman, person could not just say, I want to be a shaman. Or my father or mother was shaman, so I'll be shaman. No chance. To be a shaman is a choice made by spirits. And this the person indica is indicated that it is chosen because of that person occasionally found a tolly, usually in forests. So a person went, for example, to, for, to uh, at hunting and occasionally, ah, oh, here is a tolly. And it's a sign that the person is chosen and that person should change direction of their life and become a shaman. So that's why when we have Toli here, it means that <laughs> it's not far from shaman themselves. So it's like initialization of new generations of shamans there on this shaman tree. Okay. And uh, uh, let's talk about another world and new world, the Maya culture. And uh, here we have, uh, we see a shaman tree here in center. Uh, that uh, all were it, we have a celestial bird, <laughs> again a bird. Under it, we have a monster, again, tiny creature. Here it is. And the bird, uh, sorry, the tree itself is registered. We could recognize that it is tree. And it's not just an uh, ornamental cross, for example. No, it is a tree. Because of here, we could see the saber tree foliage. In fact, here it's, it does look like foliage. They look like spines. This is a photo from saber tree. And this uh, tree has spines. Does it look similar? Something with uh, this spine, these spines. We have spines here, so it's a uh, saber tree. And uh, this face of uh, monster, it was reconstructed uh, so in 1990s, as far if I remember correctly. Not only at this very world tree, but at, uh, there are other examples. And uh, it is at the bottom, exactly where it should be for tonic creatures. Well, uh, which type of world tree? So now we know that there are different species play as a role of world tree, but not only like this. There are different types of world tree: tree of life, tree of knowledge, for example, in Genesis in Bible, tree of heaven, shaman tree. We already found it, tree of fertility, and so on. So, uh, so there are many different types of world tree. So sometimes we see, we say directly that it is world tree, but sometimes we say, we say that it is tree of life, for example, or even tree of death. So it does matter what function it has, it's still connected with the tree of life, of uh, world tree. A uh, world tree is deeply connected with rituals, with rites. And usually what we have, in center we have world tree itself or its substitution like altar or object of veneration or maybe benefactor or could be even a victim, uh, something which should be sacrificed. And around it, in the central part, there are participants, usually around in four corners, or when we represent it uh, like picture, they should be on both sides, left and right. Let's return again to what we had already in Maya culture. We have world tree, and we see this uh, world tree in connection with ritual when a leader of a country uh, to uh, gave the ruler, the skipper, to his son, six years old son, and the names are written everywhere, so we know precisely the meaning of this ritual. So he gave the uh, the uh, right to govern the country to his son here. So we have participants of the ritual around the uh, world tree here, which is in the center. 
Uh, what is important? In the Neolithic period, 50% of time of people, of their social life, was dedicated to rituals. That's why we discovered it recently. And uh, in the uh, 20th century, there was the beginning of studying of ritual. Now we are very much, uh, we know very much because of we started developing it, it. And we found out that myths is not central part. The central part is rituals and myths are just uh, to remember how rituals should, should be conducted and which type of rituals were. We already discussed it is birth, wedding and death of a certain person, but not only this. 50% of time could not be dedicated to, to this type of activity. Uh, another type is cycle. There are day cycles or seasonal cycles or yearly or, for example, every 12 years cycles. So there are many different cycles and each of them uh, are in rituals. And what's interesting is that rituals repeat creations. That's what, what we found. And uh, in this situation, we have a kind of contradiction because of, for example, when ritual repeats creation and it is a ritual of wedding, then it means that during wedding there should be representation of creation again. So uh, groom and bride and their union should represent creation of the world. So the union should happen at the sacred place where the world was created and so on. This type of uh, rituals and uh, a text connected with wedding was already analyzed in uh, our research in 2014 uh, in Kitten Plantarium and Observatory. It was published already. And uh, But now I want to talk about something different. Cycles, just because of the cycles, they differ from creation. Because of creation happened once. But cycles should repeat creation constantly. As a result, for example, creation of the world should appear a new year. So every time when new year should start, we should start from uh, uh, creation. So we, uh, we uh, transform the concept of creation of the world into every year uh, happening. Moreover, for example, in Egypt, the sun uh, died and then rebirth again, not yearly, every day. It is attested in the New Kingdom period. But at the beginning, it had to be once, uh, I'll open it, this, uh, our cards later. So it was cre uh, creation, it, was, it should happen just once. So that's what we have and the, uh, here. So rituals, uh, they were, to remember them, uh, myths were developed, but rituals repeat the cre creation of the world. And that's why there was this type of transformation. Uh, creation became uh, cyclic. Okay. So transformations of the world of tree. So sometimes instead of the uh, world of tree, we see in center world pillar, for example, or world mount, or axis mundi, or obelisk, or just temple, and so on. So many different types uh, exist instead of even first man. So the man who was the very first, who gave birth to all the rest of uh, men, of, of people of this tribe, and so, so on. What's important for us is world egg. Uh, so uh, linguists and other researchers, they found out that instead of world tree, there could be world egg. And let's look at this transformation of world uh, tree. Instead of world tree, we have world egg. Myth of creation of the world could be found, for example, in the Rig Veda. And there is a, a golden salmon uh, or golden seed. Uh, the name is Hiranyagarbha. 
So it should mean golden seed. It is in waters, uh, first stanza describes this text, and the seventh stanza, uh, so some stanzas later, found revealed that uh, Hiranyakarpa is in uh, waters. So uh, in the beginning rose our golden uh, seed, and it is creation, uh, it is beginning of all created beings. So this is myth of creation. So our world egg was in the beginning. And myth of the end of the world uh, described, for example, in Slovak legend. It was written, uh, recorded in Afanasyev by the poetic outlook of uh, Slav's nature and uh, of Slav's about nature. And uh, it is... Uh, recorded like this well, let's begin and let's uh, re uh, read this uh, uh, myth from beginning so i would not say what was at the very beginning but there was a beautiful egg and uh, one moment people were disappointed with the way how world goes and they come to that egg and uh, started to throw stones in it and it broke and water flow from it, and they have all humanity drawn that water in the world flood. So this that was the end of the world. So that's how an egg connected from beginning of creation of the world till the very end there was this uh, egg. So world egg we have we could meet in different cultures and in different times and in different states of uh, uh, outlook of the beginning of world or of the end. Now our story comes to Ayman Ibrahim, uh, who was a young astronomer when I met with him. He was in, I met with him in 2006 when in Egypt there was total solar eclipse. So I visited Egypt and uh, uh, met with Ayman. And uh, he made uh, researchers during three years in 1999 and 2003, most of them are published at this link. So the link still exists, so you may saw many of them. And that's what he found. He found out that in Egyptian mythology, there is description of total solar eclipse. That's what he, he found. For example, he found that there is great Kekler, and here it is, here he is, great Kekler. He gave birth, uh, he produced an egg, and this is our egg. He produced not just an egg, he produced black egg. And from that black egg came primeval mound, and out of the primeval mound came the god Ra, god of the sun. So what do we have? Totality phase is described by this uh, black egg and the primeval uh, mount represent partial phase because of when the moon goes from the sun during total solar eclipse, the, uh, above the moon, there is a kind uh, as there is piece of the solar disk. So it is the god of Ra, it was reborn again. And this, Primeval mount, this uh, he, uh, hill, steep hill, it is here, it is this part of the moon which goes out of the sun at the, uh, during the eclipse and the next phases. What else do we have? We have wind egg, in fact. In the sky, we could see black egg with winds. It is the type of solar corona. Sometimes solar corona look elongated and it produced like winds around. And indeed, wind egg is attested in some cultures, and it is instead of a uh, world tree, it is in the center of the world. And we have wind solar disk. We don't need to go far away from Egypt. It is in Egypt. Here it is, for example, the solar disk, and it is wind. So not much to go think about. So uh, what uh, in, uh, could we say about mythopoetic period? People saw the uh, disc 
uh, circle with winds around during creation of the world, and they describe it. Yeah, it is. Uh, what else we have? So if we have uh, winds, it means that we have bird. So bird, which uh, vanished in fire, and it produced black ash. Here we have black ash, and then rebirths again with rebirth. So this is the concept of Greek phoenix. And uh, Egyptians did not say word phoenix. They had other word, Benu, but still the main idea was the rebirth of this very bird. It was constantly rebirth during total solar eclipse. And uh, this phoenix could appear, for example, in Greek culture till nowadays. It is on a, a coin of first uh, Hellenic and the, uh, Republic and uh, bird in flames with light over it. Or, for example, the coat of arms of Indonesia, it has golden eagle, uh, Garuda bird, which is deeply connected with the incarnation uh, of Phoenix. So here we are. So we have many uh, representations of Phoenix in modern culture. Another way of thinking comes from locals. And indeed, solar corona during solar, uh, total solar eclipses not always look like winds. It, sometimes it looks like petals or flowers. For example, in 1999, we have solar corona. We don't need much uh, fantasy to see here lotus with petals. Or in 2015, in Spitsbergen, again, we see a so, uh, solar corona look like pentels. And we have Egyptian representation of God of uh, the sun who appeared from lotus. Here we are. And lotus, it, gave, uh, it bring us to primeval mount. Sometimes lotus uh, brought to egg and from that egg there came primeval mount and the, then we have God Ra. So exactly the same description again. Place of creation. Place of creation is in Egyptian mythology, like Ayman Ibrahim uh, described, is the sky. In the sky, there is ocean because of the, we, we experience rains from the sky. So it means that there is some ocean, some waters in sky. And there is island in this ocean. And it is, uh, this island is the place where the god son was born. So here we are. That's how place of creation connected and now we know its position it is in the sky it's we should not search for it on the ground and uh, we constantly see here two colors black and gold gold is not metal in this situation it is color let's uh, look at creations in different cultures uh, choose Slavs because of it was already discussed in 2014. So I just copy and paste what was there in the discussion. So it is a Ukrainian uh, carol and uh, it is it describes in fact uh, creation of the world. It was about a bird and here is our text. Let's have a look. So it's a, we speak about a bird which goes to the bottom of the sea and it took black soil and golden stone and all this in the sky and the first mentioned creature is the sun. Does it resemble what I already discussed right now? So we see creation of the world like description of the total solar eclipse. Stage by stage, exactly the same, even the same colors. Okay, Norse mythology. This is younger Adam. And what we have here, the earth appeared from the sea. And what I want to say at this moment is it is a recreation. So there was great battle of gods with tony creatures. Everything vanished in fire. And then from the sea, 
And now we have this text from the sea arose the earth. Let's go further. And I'm sorry, I should move this a bit. Yes, everything was uh, burned in fire. And in this, on this earth, there is a sacred uh, Ida plain, sacred place, the central place where the gods live. So it reincarnated again, again it, uh, it appeared. And on this Ida plain, they found golden, we don't care about what, what, what exactly they found, some small pieces, but the color is golden again. And who appeared first? The first who appeared are Vidar and Vali. They are descendants, the children of Odin, the main god. The main god uh, died during the battle and his children appeared. They survived uh, the battle and the re rebirth of the world and here they are. So in fact, they are practically reincarnation, rebirth of the main god again. So we have a description of total solar eclipse and we finally unexpectedly to me found the same golden color. Actually, you may do this uh, thing again with any creation of the world of any mythopoetic uh, tribes, periods and so on. Uh, modern, for example, in India, we have till now a lot of tribes who live in a mythopoetic period or in old one. So just open and read. If uh, I predict now that you may see their gold and uh, uh, black, and you may see there the sea and an island. So my prediction for all for creations everywhere in the world, just check. Well, so what do we have? Old Kingdom, it existed about 240, uh, 2400, uh, 700, 2200 before Common Era. Uh, that period we have this line of creation of the uh, world, description of total solar eclipse, or this line of description of total solar eclipse, and there is no world tree there at all. But at the same time, there is world tree. We know that world tree stood in the temple in Heliopolis in Old Kingdom. So there, it was there, but Ayman Ibrahim does not need to describe world tree at all when he reconstructed the total solar eclipse was the origin for mythology, for understanding of the world, and it became basic idea in the outlook. How it happened. Okay, let's now we are coming to our main point of our talk. So, what is primeval mount? It is a stone, a steep hill. Here it is. This is our steep hill. So, out of the steep hill, the border of lunar disk, the sun appears. So when the sun appears, okay, we have a Benu bird or Ibis or whatever, the sun god Ra himself in Egypt, for example, or in any other uh, culture, some, something golden. So we don't care much now at the moment what is this over our steep hill, but this is a stone because of it is on an island. Okay, island should be consist of stone, so it's it's more or less obvious and simple to understand. So it's uh, it is island of fire, of course, because of the sun is hot and produce fire, so it's simple. It's place of birth of the sun and place of creation of the world because of uh, it is this observation which pr uh, produced such idea. Okay, so we have primeval man. This very picture, by the way, was taken by George Trulias when he observed total solar eclipse in uh, 2017 in the United States. So it's part of that solar total eclipse. Well, so let's go further. What do we have? A linguistic approach in a, a mutual work of Ivanov and, Top and Toparov in 1974. It's shown that 
a nostratic word kara brought to proto in the European word perku. So um, brought this to, uh, to this word. So this uh, transformation was proved. Kara means rock, steep hill, and perku means oak. And oak we could hear till now, for example, in Latin, kerkus, perku, so kerkus, or kerkuri, or even corkera. It's an Illyrian name for island Corfu. So uh, we constantly meet with orc like this uh, in, in modern languages. And uh, moreover, Perku brought to a uh, name of god Perun, that, that was the main god uh, who uh, was in basic myth and struggled with a snake and god of uh, the function is god of thunder. Well, but what we have now, primeval mound was a steep hill. And uh, if it is steep hill, this word which came from the rock, stone, steep hill, which uh, brought to the next word, oak, so it means that there could be transformation of primeval mound into oak. Okay, let's discuss what is what does it mean nostratic because of most uh, I believe for most of you nostratic is completely new word. Now we uh, have main, uh, six main families of languages in modern world, and uh, here we have uh, Indo-European group of languages. Urali group of languages and so on. So you, uh, you may read them here. Altai, Kartvelian. Kartvelian is very small, it's here. Afro-Asiatic, okay, let, let me finish. So this is Afro-Asiatic uh, group and uh, Maltese language belongs to it as well. And ancient Egyptian here. And uh, yeah, Dravidian, now it survived only in this part of the world in uh, India. And uh, all of these languages, Pedersen in 1906-03 proposed to come from one language. So there was one proto-language, which he named Nostratic, and uh, this language brought to six others, which uh, developed further after it, after Nostratic language vanished. Uh, modern research put Nostratic language into 15,000, 10,000 years before common era. And uh, the place where it should be is Fertile Crescent. That's how we name it. So the first people, the people who spoke Nostratic lived somewhere here. Uh, Fertile Crescent play important role in Neolithic age because of it is this very place where Neolithic revolution happened. It is this place where people start farming and domestication of animals. Well, well but it happened later. It is Neolithic times. The time which we, are spo we spoke about is a uh, time of uh, Paleolithic, when people were hunters and gatherers. They still make this type of activity in this place. But what's interesting, it is this very period when we found out were highly developed uh, culture. Uh, this slide I took from another talk, which uh, Keaton Planterum and Observatory gave uh, at Cambridge University Astronomical Society two years ago. As a, this is video record of it, and that's the moment when the slide appeared. So uh, Klaus Schmidt was, uh, the person who, archaeologist, who discovered, excavated Gebekli Tepe, the culture of T-shaped stones. And it was found not only in one place, but in 150 kilometers around. So it should mean that many people in Paleolithic pe period, they already developed this type of stones, the sculpture, they uh, uh, carvated it, they cover it with some images. Ah, let me show these images, it's incredible. 
so very non, uh, natural look looking images so this for example fox you may recognize it and uh, so on so this t-shaped stones and the oh sorry i i just don't see everything on my slide but it's okay so and uh, the, we dated it it's nine thousand uh, year before common era so well-developed culture and this culture of course people there live for centuries and they had to absorb total solar eclipse and they have to explain each other and next generation what does it mean they already talk to each other and they talk now we know nostratic language so it means that when they explain it the chances are large that they gave uh, so now we are coming to our veristic reconstruction that in late paleolithic age the observations of totality brought to myth of creation and end of the world and there it is there when they gave names to world uh, tree uh, to world egg and to primary mount Okay, it could be nostratic, it could be before. I don't know when exactly myth of creation and end of the world appeared, when people start explain to each other their own observations. And the observations of total solar eclipse, in fact, it's very rare. In general, if we look on the earth occasionally, just occasionally, in the same place, it repeats once in 300 years. That's why people describe to next generation this seldom phenomenon. And they put it in their uh, rites and rituals. Well, our next idea. In place, Fertile Crescent, where people spoke Nostratic, they gave name to primeval mound Kara. And it is this name which was transformed later into Proto-Indo-European language like Orc. Orc and Proto-Indo-European is Neolithic age. So this word survived came from Nostratic and that's all. So just because of the development of languages. But that what brought us next is Orc in Proto-Indo-European uh, Perku it by means because of it took central part it took part of uh, in myth of creation as the place of creation so it was it became world tree and uh, now it we have just cultural boring uh, and all other uh, cultures like uh, in ancient egypt they put world tree uh, in place of world tree their own sycamore and so on so all over the world the world tree was substituted by trees in uh, their own cultures. So that's our reconstruction. And uh, the result of this reconstruction, there should not be world tree in Paleolithic age. And indeed, uh, Toporov uh, mentioned in his uh, article about world tree, in uh, encyclopedia that there is no world tree in Paleolithic age. Our reconstruction says that Oak is a father of world tree and it could appear only in Proto-Indo-European, which is Neolithic. So we could not find it earlier. We found, found many ideas in Paleolithic uh, period in uh, there are many artifacts like drawing on okay, in caves and so on but none of them is connected with world tree so we have this our outcome coincide with res uh, results which come from uh, researchers already okay we have one interesting thing here it's interweaving there is coexistence of stone and world tree in the same myth. For example, in ancient Egypt, Ben Ben stone or uh, primeval mound, they exist together with sycamore in old, in, uh, uh, old uh, kingdom period. Or in Slavs culture, for example, there is island Buyan. Okay, island, now we know that it should be island on the sky. And there is sacred stone on this island, it's named Alater. And there is 
secretary org and they exist together simultaneously in the same in the same place so that's what we have for example in modern painting so the this painting is definitely modern because of you could see uh, round earth with uh, russia visible here well so what we have proto in the european it existed from 4,500 before Common Era till 2,500 before Common Era. After that, it decayed in many different branches. Well, and our answer, what is the oldest world tree and when it should appear? It should appear on the age when Proto-Indo-European language come and when Nostratic disappeared. So most probably it should be around 4,500 years before common era. So that's what we dig for the old, oldest world tree. Okay, in modern culture, uh, let's go to cinema and watch movie X-Men Apocalypse. It was made in 2016. And uh, at the beginning of the movie, and Sabarnu, as a ruler, he said that he needs four gods. This is the end of the movie, one hour, that is eight minutes pass. At the end of the movie, we could we see the ruler surrounded with four gods. Do you remember where four come from? It comes from central part of world tree. There should be four anything and four From gods. The French. Yes, central part. And but we uh, have why, sorry, but why there's, uh, there's uh, Vata had five branches? Say again. The Ashvata, as, as Vata had yes. five branches. Vata, uh, what does mean Vata? The Ashvata. Yes, I don't know this word. You showed us uh, earlier. Yes. The word Ashvat, Ashrat, Ashratha or Ashvatha. Ashvatha. Ah, Ashvatha. Ashvatha. Yes. Yes, I know it this had, word. It had uh, five branches. Why? I don't know. Do, uh, do you mean just uh, the the view the representation on the seal? Yes. This one. Yeah, there are five branches. Uh, it does mean much here. It is just, uh, you see, uh, the central part is here where we have unicorns. This is the central part. And this is the top. We don't care how many branches they draw, they draw here. At the central part and unicorns, if you remember, are hoofed animals. So we don't see here only something under unicorns. So the lower part, the roots. Next to roots, there could be maybe this representation of fish, but I believe it is uh, uh, writing, it's text. The, uh, the, these lines are uh, text, so it's not fish. Otherwise, we could say that it is fish and it is at the, in roots. Did I answer your question? Judge. Okay, let's proceed. Well, so what do we have now in modern uh, mythology, let's say? So it's not mythology, in fact, it's just the way how we could see that the ancient idea survived till now. I don't know how screen uh, writers for this movie, they came to this idea. But in fact, that what we have here is a clear description of the, of the uh, world tree. We have benefactor on the place of world tree. Here he is, the ruler himself. We have participants on the sides. Here they are, participants on the sides. Uh, I gave a bit more, so we don't care that there are just four gods. Uh, at this place, we have even one victim. And the next uh, uh, scene of uh, the movie, the victim appeared. And we have, uh, this is a representation of ritual. And we have ritual. 
at this very moment, the ruler uh, destroys the city. This is the ritual. We have action. Okay. And one more social habit. It's a superstition in order not to jinx what people do. Touching wood, it is in the Great Britain. Holding the wood, it is in Egypt. They have made amulets from wood and keep uh, uh, wear them constantly with them. Knocking on wood, it is everywhere. Slavs, Cyprus, Iran, and many, many more. So all over the world. Knocking on the table. Okay, it's Norway, but what's the difference? Tables mostly made from wood. So even you may see how superstition survives nowadays in White House 2015. People knock the wood. Or the uh, budget be accepted by Congress. So they developed it now here and then approved and then it should be approved by someone else. In order for it not to be approved, they made this section superstition. So uh, what's interesting, this superstition, I believe, should come from the world tree. It is my belief, so we, we have to develop it. So I invite everyone to, to proceed in this direction and to find the proofs that there is connection of just wood with uh, world tree with uh, in this way so you are welcome to make this journey into prehistoric times uh, this is the literature which was used to prepare this talk and uh, if we are talking about solar eclipses the nearest one will happen not far not in long time ago, in a way. So 25th of October and Tuesday. And it will happen in Cyprus. First contact in Cyprus will be in 2049, maximum in 1402. And uh, the last contact in 1515 Cyprus time. During maximum, the cover was almost half of the solar disk will be covered of the moon by the moon. So it's really interesting. So that's the way how it will look like. And this is where it will be all over the world. Here we have Cyprus and indeed it's my calculation 0 0.46. And it looks like we will have in uh, Kitty, it's on Tantarmond Observatory 0 0.46. And it should be after 11 UT. So 14.02 local time, it's two minutes ahead. So everyone is welcome. And one more news which come recently to us is uh, uh, that uh, there was International Olympiad on Astronomy and Astrophysics that took place just a few days ago. And uh, Cyprus team brought bronze medal for me. Ara Magdesan, he uh, attended uh, Kiton Pantaramut Observatory Astronomy Academy, and uh, he brought to Cyprus this bronze medal. It is the very first bronze medal in history of Cyprus. So we, we may be proud for him and for the whole Cyprus team. Well, and our next science cafe will be as usual on the 27th of September. We will announce the talk a bit later. But the time will be as usual at 20.00. Excellent presentation, Alexander. Very interesting. Um, I like your theory about that you want to investigate about touching wood, knocking wood, if it's related to the, to the, the work tree. It could be possible. Yes, it's named. Uh, heuristic approach. So yeah. this is the next uh, direction of research. So I don't have enough proofs. I have just uh, widely spread superstition. So it could be uh, connected with the world. Some more questions.
Uh, before we proceed to the questions, I would also like to thank Ara Matesian on behalf of the Gideon Play Carbon Observatory team for trusting us for his preparation, but also for attending the Gideon Astronomy Academy. This shows that our work done is uh, uh, is uh, awarded, and uh, his devotion in studying and his passion for astronomy and astrophysics is. Uh, it's in the right, uh, it's on the right route. And I would also like to uh, thank uh, Katie Dimitriou, our space scientist. Um, she was with us uh, earlier. She had to go because she was uh, uh, with, uh, she was looking at the students at Jubilee Hotel in Trudos, where he had there on a project. So, um, the for recommending us for to him for the, his preparation. Uh, thank you, Ara. Congratulations, and uh, I wish you more success in the future. Alexander, uh, the congratulations also to you for teaching him privately. Uh, you did an excellent job. Congratulations, and uh, we're waiting for the next one. Yes, it's we have many. <laughs> Yes, we are. We have many people who are uh, excellent students and outstanding uh, performances in school. Okay. What's about Thank Avis? You. Do you have some questions? Yeah, thank you. It was very interesting. You know, I like myths and archaeology and everything. It was excellent. Yeah, I had a question. Because you show the different kind of trees from different parts of the world, but I didn't understand in the Fertile Crescent, what was the tree there? I didn't see something like that. I saw for India, the Slavs, Africa. Yes. Uh, from the Fertile Crescent? There is no, of course. Uh, uh, have, uh, the reason is because of... Uh, e uh. Our reconstruction said Perfect. that they need to have, without uh, world tree at all, anything. They should develop myth like Ayman Ibrahim reconstructed. So there is an island in the sky. On this island, the god Rai, or god, god of the sun appeared. Sorry, it's not Rai yet. <laughs> god, uh, god of the sun appeared, that's all. And this uh, switch into uh, from a steep hill into tree into oak, it happened only in, in, in the European language, prime the European. We don't know right now precisely where it was at the moment. The best guessing was and the most uh, proved was made by Remco Bukaert and the other people in 2012, when he proved that out of two models, either in here in uh, um, Anatolia or above somewhere here in, uh, 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 so, so or above there are just two places which are discussed by linguists. The, not huge probability, but much more, much more uh, evidences that uh, calculations show that only from this place it could come. Okay. So uh, for probability like 99% again, not 1% against 1%, something like that. So that's why, that's why it's definitely come from here, from Anatolia. Ah, okay. So, I mean, prior to European. So the switch from uh, the appearance of orc should should uh, happen here at around uh, 4,500 years before common era. Okay, I understand. So it's because the Fertile Crescent was much older then. That's why they don't have a tree. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So in I believe that in Nostratic they developed already this concept. And the reason why they developed, because of they built such things. So I'm sorry, what what people 
they already make such things. Why? They could not think in their idea when they observe total solar eclipse, how to explain it? If they make such things, they had to. So, yeah. so is, that's why if they, they had to explain it somehow, they make this uh, concept of creation of the world, end of the world, creation of Ra, oh, so, sorry, Ra, <laughs> much more, much earlier. So creation of God of the, of the sun, but they should create this uh, steep hill, primeval mount from which the uh, God sun come. Alexander, you're saying that the, these T-shaped structures represent the world tree? No, they have nothing to, to do with this. These T-shaped structures are the marks for us that if we see them here, 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 yes. here, and here, it means but they were all to the same uh... the same period. Okay. And uh, so it means that people produce here one huge culture. Yes. They were not just one tribe consist of 500 people, and that's all. It is widely spread a lot of all over this area uh, culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, linguists show uh, uh, independently that it is at this place where people should speak Nostratic. Uh -huh. So it come not simultaneously, it come from different areas. So linguists discovered that it should be here. Meanwhile, uh, Klaus Schmidt excavated Gebekli Tepe. And is all that, others. Is that mentioned uh, Iran is Persia? Persia. Uh, you may find out by uh, rivers here. Ephrates yeah, here, Tigris is here. Uh, no, Persia, now it's in, Persia now it's, I believe, is here. No, uh, no, uh, no, 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 no now it's in Iraq, but before it belonged to Iran. Iraq, yeah. So, so here is modern map. Iran, Petal, used to be, Crescent. It used to be Iran. It used to be Iran. And the Gebekli Tepe, let's look at Frat Tigris and this river. So, uh, Ephratus here. So, the Gebekli Tepe is somewhere here. Mm -hmm. So, those are yeah, Syria. No. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not Syria. Right? It's even before Syria. All this Assyria, Akkad, Egypt, all of them are much, much later. <laughs> the, you are, we are talking about civilizations already. No. <laughs> Nostratic was much before. Here, here is Nostratic and here is first civilizations. Iran, before, so, so, because Iran had the whole region. So even the latest 10,000, 3,000, 7,000 years be between them. Were those structures that you showed us, are they considered petroglyphs? Petroglyphs. Those are considered petroglyphs. Yes, petroglyphs, yes. Yeah, yes. Um, pet okay. petroglyphs, yes. And uh, what's interesting, uh, some of the animals. Uh, yes, there's animals yes. Or, or ornaments and so on. Some of them look and this and a cute one. Well, uh, some uh, some of them look very highly iconographic. Yeah, they, they are not connected with surroundings. They are like symbols, like coat of arms. So okay. they mean uh, much more than just animal. They should uh, there should be symbol behind them. For example, uh, now we have shamanic culture, and in shamans, uh, each shaman takes uh, origin. Of, uh, some of them from bears, others from wolves, others from eagles, and so on. Mm -hmm. So could be same. Could be this uh, here, for example, people of this, uh, let's say, clan or. Uh, I don't know. I don't know this words in English, all of them. But yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, are, I believe, yeah, to this tribe, others belong to this tribe, and so on. So uh, there could be much more. And what's interesting, not the complete complex is excavated till now. And they are not in hurry because of they want to develop now. Science developed it so quick 
that they want to see what uh, in next 10 years we will have new tools in archaeologists in archaeology and with these new tools during excavation we would not lose something which we will lose today mm -hmm. yeah so that's that's why they don't excavate everything yet and they are not they don't <laughs> they don't want to do it very quick thank you it was very interesting thank you iris for your for joining us for your questions maybe you have some more questions no it's fine it's fine thanks okay thank you okay let's finish then right now we are waiting everyone again in the next science cafe with new topics. the 27th of september okay Bye. Better time.